Hey guys, thanks for watching Precision Rifle Network. Joel here. Today's video is all about how to dope the wind. So I am still out here at the Whittington Center, <laughs> the NRA Whittington Center uh, in New Mexico. And um, today is not a high wind day. I probably should have done this video the other day when it was like 14 mile an hour wind. Uh, we're at maybe like a five mile an hour wind today, uh, but it is switchy and variable. And so I thought, ah, let's bust this out. Now we've done previous videos on the way that I go about doping the wind. And I will link to those uh, somewhere in the description or maybe up in the corner of the video. I'm not sure which side it is. I've got a target out here at 388 yards. It's enough that wind comes into play. It is a small target. You'll see it on the other camera when I start shooting, but I've got just this way about doping the wind that I think would be beneficial to some of you new folks. If you're old hats at this, you're pros, whatever, you've already got your method, but I've got my method and this is it, right? So when I come up to uh, shoot a stage or an animal or whatever it is, I want, the first thing I want to do is I want to feel it. So I've got this whole list. It's feel it, look at it, guesstimate it, kestrel it, confirm it with mirage or binoculars, shoot it, then spot it, spot my impact and adjust back to the center. Um, so for me, I'm coming up here, I'm feeling it. I'm like, okay, I feel it on my face. That's at least a three. It's continuously on my face. That's a five. I'm looking at the grasses around me. Um, I cannot tell the direction of the wind based on the grasses. I can just see that they're moving, but I can't tell the direction. So it's not a seven mile an hour wind. It's a five, maybe even slightly less right now. And so I've felt it, I've looked at it, I've guesstimated it. I think it's a five mile an hour wind. And I believe that it is coming from my right. 90 degrees okay and it does switch to coming from behind me right here especially as the target kind of goes up through this little tree uh, wash up there so uh, i may hold a tiny bit less because i think the wind is going to be funneling in behind the bullet as opposed to coming straight across it but we'll see as it comes time to take the shot so i've felt it looked at it guesstimated it now i'm going to kestrel it right so i take my kestrel out and this is where i'm going to i'm going to find what direction the wind is i'm going to point that into the wind and I'm going to take a measurement. Now, some guys will point the kestrel at the target and let the wind come across the kestrel this way as they're pointing towards the target so that they know that the wind that's actually hitting the kestrel is the same. I, I don't do that. I do a clock method. So I actually point the kestrel right into the wind. I figure out that it's going five miles an hour from my shooting position is 12 o'clock. So that wind is coming from three o'clock. You understand? That's kind of how I do that. So I'm going to be holding for probably a four mile an hour wind from my three o'clock, unless it switches again, in which case it's coming from behind me and I'm going to hold no wind. <laughs> but so I kestrel it. I'm going to confirm it through my scope with looking at Mirage if there is any. So the next part is just to shoot it and see what we get, right? I'm going to try to spot my impact and adjust to center if I miss. So here we go. All right, we got a good impact right there, guys. Uh, there's not enough wind, I guess, for it to be an issue. Uh, it did switch and was coming straight from behind me. I felt that as I was about to take the shot, so I ended up holding straight up as opposed to holding uh, the wind that was off to my right. Now, a four to five mile an hour full value wind at 388 yards is not even off the side of the plate anyway, but you just know that through experience. So. Uh, another handy tool that I've learned over the years that I will uh, throw up on the screen is if you can feel a three mile an hour wind, it's because you can feel it on your face. If it's a continuous felt wind on your face, it's at least five. Uh, if you look at the grasses around you and you can tell the direction the wind is going, that's at least a seven. If those grasses and vegetation are starting to lay down in the wind, that's at least a nine. And then if you start looking at the big branches in trees, if the bigger branches in trees uh, start waving, that's in the neighborhood of 11 to 12 to 13 mile an hour wind. 
You can also verify with Mirage. Mirage at that point should be laying down flat to the ground and just cruising along. Um, and my personal ability to judge the wind tops out around 15 miles an hour. And that would be, you know, flat Mirage, big wind or big limbs just waving continuously. Uh, and you can obviously figure out the direction as well. And then I just rely on the Kestrel after that. It's usually fairly accurate. Take a shot, confirm it. Was I off to the right? Was I off to the left? How much? You know, you've got a calibrated aiming device a couple inches in front of your face. Make sure that you can spot your impact or your miss and make your corrections back to center. Guys, thanks for watching Precision Rifle Network today. Hopefully you found that interesting and or helpful. Smash that subscribe button. Tune in again soon for more great videos from Precision Rifle Network.